Hey everyone, welcome back to Hackwood. In this video, we we'll dive into a highly popular interview question, product of array except self. We will be covering three different approaches in this video, ranging from the brute force methods to the optimized solutions. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced coder, this problem will enhance your understanding of arrays, prefix products, and efficient computation. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. So problem statement is, given an integer array nums, return an array answer such that answer of i equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums of i. The product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to fit in 32 bit integer. You must write an algorithm that runs in o of n time and without using the division operation. So basically what does the question ask? We need to generate a product of all elements except i. So for the ith position, it should be having the product of all other numbers except that i. They also confirm that this product is guaranteed to fit in the 32 bit integer. So we don't need to care about the overflow as well. Next thing they mentioned is it we had write in O of n time and without using the division operation. So how do you think like we can do this using division operation? So basically division operation like it works when there is no zero in the array. So when there is no zero, what can we do? We just can multiply all the elements in the array and then we get the product of the array. So uh, for each element, we can just divide by the current element and then replace the array with this uh, product by division. Okay. But that won't be working when the, there is a zero in the array, right? They clearly call out that we should not use this here. That's why. So let's take a closer look in example one. So here they are given one, two, three, four nums and then output is 24, 12, 8, 6. So how is 24 here? It is just the product of two, three and four. So it means that for the given position, we should be having the product of all other uh, array elements except that position. Same for this 12. So 12 is a product of what? 1 into 3 into 4. 8 is a product of what? 1 into 2 into 4. Similarly, 6 is product of 1 and 2 and 3. Okay. Let's look at example 2. Here given nums is minus 1, 1, 0, minus 3 and 3. So this is the classic example where we can't use a division operation. So for the element with 0, then it would be like what? Like we are dividing by 0. That, that will give exception, right? Divide by 0. So that's why we can't do that method. If they don't have a uh, zero element in the array, we can do that. But uh, like it depends based on the question and all. And here the question explicitly asks us we should not do using division operator. Okay. So here the constraints are nums length is in the enclosed range of 2 to 10 power 5. So at least two elements and 10 power 5 is the greater element number. Okay. In that case, we can't perform this using n square. We have to perform it using either n or n log n. Okay. Why? Because n square would make it to 10 power 10, but only 10 power 8 operations are possible. And then nums of i is in the enclosed range of minus 32 plus 30. That means to say that all the elements in this array would be in the range of minus 32 plus 30 only. The product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to fit in 32 bit integer. So we don't need to care about the overflows and all. So here the follow up is can you solve the problem in O of 1 so extra space complexity? So in docket they given the output array doesn't count as extra space for space complexity analysis. So don't worry, we'll start with the brute force approach and then we'll go to O of an extra space complexity as well. So this is the baller paired code given. It takes nums as an input and returns the list of integers. Okay. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind info post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. The first approach is brute force approach. So basically brute force is just like trying all possible combination. So what is the intuition here for each index? We calculate the product of all other elements in the array by iterating to the entire array. So this is exactly what the question asked is. Basically we're translating the question to our solution. So what is algorithm here? So first step is to insert an empty result array. Basically we need an something to store our result rate. So that's why we need an empty result array. So for each index, we have to insert a variable to hold the product. So why here we have to keep this uh, variable because uh, this is the cumulative product, right? If it is just like a constant product where we like perform right away operation and do that, like we don't need this variable, but we have to do the chain calculation of product. That's why we need a variable to hold the product. And then we iterate to the array, multiplying all elements except the one at the current index. This is pretty straightforward, right? This is what the question asks. And then we store the product in the result array. Simple, right? So let's look into code. So firstly, we're getting the length of nums because we want this for our iteration, right? And then also to insulate our uh, result array. We're just uh, insulating an empty result array. 
so here we doing using this approach so basically uh, this is just inside the result to be uh, like 0 0 0 0 till the length of the array you, uh, so you got this right this is just like shorthand form of initialization okay and then here uh, we just iterating so in iteration we doing till uh, range n so n is what length of the nums so this generates the indices from 0 to n minus 1 okay and then this is the same step to where for each index we initialize n variable to hold the product so we discussed right we require this because uh, we want it to be chain product so that's why we want a variable outside and then uh, this is like for every uh, iteration this would be initialized to 1 okay in the step 3 we iterate to the array multiplying all the elements except the one at the current index so how can we perform that so basically we uh, form another loop because we have to iterate to all the array for each index right that's why we uh, define another for loop here for uh, here j is the variable and then we checking if j is not equal to the i so in that case only we find in the product so basically this is required to exclude the current index if current index also included then that doesn't make sense right the question asks us the product except self guys okay so here we just getting the product stored in our product variable this is the shorthand form of doing the product so basically it means that product is equal to product into nums of j okay so it multiplies all other elements as we iterate to the all the index range at the end after completing this for loop we are storing our result of i as product so basically we need to store this complete result right that's what we are doing it here so at the end we return the result simple right we just translated this to our code here time complex is n square because for each element you are iterating to the entire list that means sir like uh, n square operations we are doing and space complex is o of 1 if you don't consider the output array else o of n here they explicitly mentioned we don't need to consider this output array space complexity that's why we can just say it's o of 1 space complexity so for this solution uh, it won't be scaled I, I know that but here o of 1 space complexity is what we achieved this is the basics of our next optimized approach okay but let's try submitting this i want you to see how the time limit exceeds for the larger array okay so i got the code ready let me try running this so this is accepted for this small test cases let me try submitting this that would execute a bigger array test cases okay in that case it would fail and we can see the time limit exceeded error as well you see here we can see that time limit is exceeded this is because the array is vast for this type of array if you perform n square operations it's gone case only because it can't perform all those 10 power 10 operations per second so our 18 test cases got paused but if your interviewer is okay with this approach then you're cool like uh, till here also it's a wide solution but just that it won't scale for large data sets okay so guys we just seen that the solution won't scale for large data sets so we need it to be performed in o of n time complexity so how can we achieve that so for that we can use a strategy like left and right products okay so here the idea is to use two auxiliary arrays left and right to store the product of elements to the left and right of the each index finally we multiply the corresponding values from this array to get the result so what does this mean so let me take an example and explain you so here the given example nums is 1 2 3 4 right so for nums we want another like left and right arrays 1 2 3 4 and then left array should contain the product of all the elements to the left of this index so here uh, let me have indexes here 0 1 2 3 so for the 0th index we don't have any element to the left of it so we just want it to be stored as 1 only okay for the two index what we want the product of all elements to the left of it okay so what do we have we just have only one here okay so this is one only and then for the second index what we want we want product of these two so it would be two in the fourth index we want product of these three one two three so it is six and then the right array we have so right array it, it's same fashion but it's like we start from here so for like each element in this array would contain the product of all the elements to the right side of it so we start filling from this corner so firstly we should fill this one because uh, after this element we don't have anything towards the right so we want it to be initialized to one if we keep it zero the product would be like when we do multiply both things that would become zero right so obviously we should have it one and then what does this index contain so this index contain the product of uh, all the elements towards the right after this so here what we have this 4 is there right so 4 into this 1 so that is 4 thirdly for the first index what we want this has to be contained the product of all the elements towards the right 
so it should contain the product of two, uh, three and four. Like how can we achieve that here? So we can just multiply three with this one, and then we can get twelve because this has a cumulative product, right? So that's why we have it twelve here. And then here uh, for the zeroth index, what we want? So we want the product except this one. So how can we achieve that? We can achieve using two into this one. That is twenty-four. So you got the idea, right? So basically we are multiplying i plus one. With the corresponding i plus one in the n, so because this i plus one in the right contains all the right product, right? So after that, the job is very simple. Now we just need to perform multiplication for each indexes here. So one into twenty-four, one into twelve, two into four, six into one. So the output is same as this one, right? Twenty-four, twelve, eight, six. So here the output array is. We just need to perform one into twenty-four, which is twenty-four. One into twelve, which is twelve, and two into four, eight. And six into one six. This is what we got the output here. So same output. So basically we solve this. Okay. So let's look into algorithm, guys. So here first step is to insert two arrays for left and right products. This is what we just did and discussed. And then next step is to uh, populate the left products array. And then after that similarly we have to populate with the right products array because we can't do this at the same time. So we have to have a separate steps for each of this. And fourth step is pretty simple. We have to combine the left and right products to get the final result. You got the approach right. So let's code this. So you notice again we just put the same steps in our code. It's very simple here. So here, uh, firstly we got this length of the nums and stored it in n because we want it for our iteration and for initialization purpose. And this is the same story as the previous because we just initializing this left and right to our empty arrays for that length. So here each element would be initialized to zero. Okay, so. Let's say n is four. We'll get like array of zero, 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 four zeros in array. Same for right. Okay. Next step, we have left of zero and right of n minus one to be inserted to one one. We fill this right just now. So for that, we have to put the same thing in code, right? So that's what this step is. So guys, this can also be written as left of zero is equal to right of zero is equal to one. I kept it in a tuple unpacking approach because like you'd be aware of this tuple unpacking approach. So this can be as simple as this one as well. I just kept this way because like you would be aware of tuple unpacking. So basically, tuple unpacking is like this would be assigned to this value and this would be assigned to this value. If you write this code, interviewer would be pretty much impressed because you know all the advanced stuff in Python. So if you write like this, it's just like normal way. This is just a tuple unpacking approach. Right? That's an advanced stuff. It's a better way of assigning the values. Now here, just populating the left product. So how do we populate the left product? We already have the zero index field, so that's why we iterate from one to n. So for left of i, we populate using left of i minus one into nums of i minus one. You know, right? Basically, like you already know the approach, right? Here, each index in the left should contain the product of every element towards the left of that index. So that's why we're just performing multiplication of left of i minus one and nums of i minus one. Nums of i minus one is the original given array. So this left of i minus one contains the product of all the elements left to this i. So we just need to multiply this with the nums of i minus one. Okay. So in that case, we can just get left of i easily. So this formula is derived from that approach. We just did the same thing in uh, filling this array, right? We just translate it into code. It's just observation, nothing fancy. So same for the uh, right product. But what differs is here we have to populate from this range, right? So for this we have to be having range from n minus two. N minus two is what like last, but this one index. So here this is already done here. We right of n minus one is equal to one. That is done. So we need to populate from here. So while filling right array, how did we populate this step? We populated using the multiplication of this and this, right? So same thing. How can you get this element index? Basically, that is right of i plus one. This is the i plus one index, and same for the nums of i plus one. We just multiplied these two and filled in this one, right? So that's how we just derived this formula. Hope you got the idea. Next step is just like combination step. For this combination, we want our result to be stored. Right? That's why we initialize the result variable. This is the same step again. We just initialize the list of length n with all zeros. And then the step four, we combine the left and right products to get the final result. So basically, we're iterating from one to n range. And then we performing the product of left of i and right of i, showing that to the result of i. So we getting all the indices filled with the product of left of i and right of i. That means that we getting the product except self. Congrats, we just did this. Okay. So here at the end we just did in the result. So guys, it's pretty easy. It's just observation, nothing fancy. So complexity. So what is the time complexity? You might have guessed it. It's o of n only because like for each element we are processing only once in each loop. 
even though we having a three loops here it's like if we literally calculate it, what would become three n so first loop it is n second loop it is n because we iterate until n right so third loop also it is n guys so that is three n so always this constant factor is neglected so it is n okay so what is the space complexity here it's o of n again here we have is o of n plus n right so that is 2n and then we ignore this constant so it is n we don't consider this thought list why because they mentioned that output array doesn't count as extra space for space complexity analysis so that's why we didn't consider this n space okay so i got the code ready here let me try running this so it is accepted for these two cases let me try submitting this So yeah, it is accept solution for all the test cases we have. So guys, third approach, this is the optimized space complexity. So basically here, uh, the time complexity remains same, but the space complexity should be optimized to O of 1. So what is the intuition? So we can optimize the space by storing the result directly in the answer array, calculating the left product in the first pass, and then multiplying them with the right product in the second pass. So basically here, uh, we are computing one of this uh, right array or left array on the fly. So we can uh, actually calculate the right product first and then we compute the left product on the fly. But I'm just doing for the left product and I'm leaving it an exercise to do for the right product array. Okay. What are steps required? First is the same thing. Initialize the answer array. Next, populate the left products directly in the answer array. Third step is to use a variable to keep track of the right product. We know why this is because this is the chain of products and we want it to be stored in variables and, uh, before we assign it. And then uh, here four step is to populate the right products and update the answer array. Okay, so basically here this remains same. This is just the optimization of the previous approach. And then we are computing the right product on the fly. Okay, so let's look into the code. This part, everything remains same. We're just getting the length and then we're just initializing the answer array. So here uh, we just have this answer array in place of the left array we had. And then we are initializing answer of 0 is equals to 1 because we're going with the left product based approach for this one. Step 2 also remains same populate the left product and directly in the answer array so you got the idea right this is the array we are returning and then in the same array we are computing the left and right products and we did not form additional array for the left and right products okay in the same array we are doing all the circuits here so firstly here uh, this is the same approach uh, we just need to for uh, you remember for the left product right so basically we are multiplying answer of i minus 1 with the nums of i minus 1 so this calculates the left product for the each element so this array contains all the product towards the left except the index for that given index okay and then uh, we have this variable to keep track of this right product so basically we need to keep track of this right product right so that's why we have to initialize a variable so this is to store our ongoing right product and then this step is to populate the right products and update the answer error see guys here we just updating the answer error directly and we do not use any extra array for computing the right product we just using this variable alone also here we are using the reverse range why because we have to populate the right from the ending right so for that case we want it to be reverse range so actually here the range generates from 0 to 3 first okay and then we passing it to a reverse function which makes it bring like case where 3 to 1 0 so, so this is the sequence of indices we will be iterating here in this one reverse range so next step is to update with the right products guys so answer of i is equal to answer of i into right so right contains the product of all the elements towards the right of the index except that index right so uh, initially we have it in slice 2 1 so here the index refer to the third index we know that we are returning to the reverse range so here we are doing the multiplication of answer of i into right so this answer of i already contains product of all elements towards the left now what do we require we want it to be contain the product of right elements as well so that's why we are multiplying it with right after this we have to update the right for the next iteration right so if you don't update it it would be still one so for that we just updating the right by uh, multiplying it with nums of i so now right becomes right into nums of i so you got the approach right here we just keeping track of the cumulative product of right using just a variable not a array we don't require array to do that so we can just multiply right with nums of i to keep uh, have all the product of elements towards the right except that right so that's why we are doing this here and then at the end we are returning the answer array so what are complexities here time complexity is o of n because for each element we are processing only once in each loop we have two loops that would add up to 2n but we ignore the factor 2 so it's o of n so next space complexity is o of 1 because we don't consider the space required for the output array and then we don't use any other array here so it's o of 1 
So you know, question also they mentioned that we don't need to consider the space required for the output array. So that's why it's O of one. So congrats, guys. We just solved this in O of one space complexity. So I got the code ready here. Let me run this. It's accepted for two cases. Let me try submitting this. Cool. It is accepted for all the test cases. So congrats, guys. You just learned the three approaches. Hope you remember these approaches and it's very easy. It's just a observation. Uh, we're not doing anything fancy. See, remember, programming is always based on observation. Nothing much it is. And that's a wrap on solving the product of array except self problem using three different approaches. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders, and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. See you on the